Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the May Land Bank Board meeting. We'll start with a statement from our attorney. Good morning, everyone. Today's board meeting is being held by an authorized communication device because of the continued closure of the land bank's offices due to the public due to public health concerns. This meeting is being recorded. Questions and comments may be made using the Q&A or raised hand function at the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in and not using the Zoom webinar link, you may ask questions or make comments by pressing star nine on your phone or using the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Please do not use the chat function. If, you have, if any member of the public has issues submitting questions or comments, please send an email to me at andrea.sa at phdc.phila.gov and that will be listed in the chat, which you can read. Please note all questions and comments received by email prior to this meeting or through the Q&A section will be included in the minutes. Um, also, prior to today's public session, the board held an executive session at which the meeting agenda and um, at which the meeting agenda was reviewed. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll have a roll call. Yes, um, Rebecca. But, uh, sorry, Rebecca Lopez Chris. Present. Uh, Ann Fadula. Present. Michael Coons. Present. Rick Sauer. I'm here. Andrew Goodman. Here. Alex Ballou. Here. Michael Coons. I'm oh, sorry, I said that already. Michael Johns. Here. Uh, and Maria Gonzalez. Present. Majida Rashid, she was absent. And so is Rich DeMarco. So we do have a quorum and may proceed. Thank you. Uh, and next we'll have approval of the minutes from the April Land Bank Board meeting. Hopefully the board has had a chance to review those. Uh, if there's no questions, comments, or edits, I will entertain a motion. Approve the minutes. Second. Second. Uh, motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the minutes of the April Land Bank Board meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes carry, and that takes us to the executive director's report. Good morning, board members and uh, public. I uh, just wanted to give the board uh, an update um, on several RFPs that have been approved. Um, we've settled on the Grace Free Dover um, project uh, that should be moving to construction start. That is with the Affordable Alliance. We've also uh, settled on the Williams and Collins project uh, and that that one is in the first district. That's with BMK Properties LLC. And we are moving to closing um, in the next couple of weeks to the second sub area for the Brewerytown, um, Brewerytown uh, RFP that was approved with um, uh, FE Myrtlewood. So also I just wanted to let the board know that uh, construction is moving. Um, and it's proceeding very uh, at a very uh, good pace on the Wharton Street RFP and other projects that have been approved. And we have begun referring um, qualified home buyers through the Turn the Key program to those projects. So, uh, that's what I have for today. Great, thank you. Uh, all right, we're moving into the uh, property disposition section of the agenda. We'll start with uh, 4A, which is an unsolicited proposal for the development of affordable housing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Today, um, good morning, board. Today, we're asking the board to authorize the disposition of nine lots in South Philly on the east side of Broad uh, to BVG Property Group. BBG is proposing to develop nine single family home ownership units that will be split between five affordable units and four market rate units. The property list includes 372 and 702 Cantrell Street, 613, 625, and 723 Mercy Street, 737 Tree Street, 535, 537, and 602 Winton Street. 
Maximum sales price of these properties will be capped at $279,000 for the five affordable units, which will be targeting households with incomes at or below 100% of AMI. The affordable units will be two stories with a basement containing three bedrooms and two bathrooms, size of roughly 1,200 square feet. The market rate units will be three stories with a basement containing four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a roof deck, totaling about 1,750 square feet. The affordable units in this particular proposal will be eligible for the MPI Turn the Key program. The proposal was unsolicited and evaluated pursuant to a disposition policy, to the disposition policy. Developer will purchase these properties at $9,000. Evidence of project financing has been provided. The applicant is compliant and good standing with the city of Philadelphia. The project will be subject to an economic opportunity plan. And the project will be subject to an irrevocable power of attorney and right of reentry reverter. Um, and again, the properties will be subject to use restrictions and income verifications under the turn to keep program as well. Um, I just want to make a note of correction. The resolution has the incorrect applicant in this, um, and it will be corrected to reflect the correct applicant name as presented here, BVG Property Group, LLC. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Um, so can we talk a little bit about, because um, I know we've seen other proposals yeah. in front of this board objective. We yeah. might have one later on. And yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh. Yeah. I need to, there were public uh, emails. Okay. I'm sorry. Usually I talk about board. Oh, okay. And then I, I do public. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. I'm That's sorry. Okay. I know you're not used to me having these questions. Um, but anyway, I know, I, I know we've seen other proposals for um, proper projects that are going to be subject to turn the key where the whole project is affordable and we offer a below market value for the property. And those um, projects seem to be viable to private developers. In this case, we've got one where there's five affordable projects, but four of them are going to be at market rate. Um, it looks like based on the development cost, those are going to be sold with a uh, you know, relatively significant profit. Um, although overall, it doesn't appear that there's a ton of profit in the project. But I just wonder what we're talking, how we're figuring out what we sell the land for that's going to be used for those market rate sales. So I think um, what we generally talk to um, uh, developers about when they consider doing this is that um, you know, we look at the overall project and what their profit margin is. To your point, 20% is the high end of it. Um, we do have conversation with um, council office before we present uh, issues like this, whether they're still supportive uh, of a project like this. Uh, I will say not every council office is the same in how they approach these. Um, so uh, we do cap it at, at 20%. Um, so if it had exceeded that, we, we probably would have um, pushed them in terms of what the uh, actual land value was gonna be. Okay, and do we know what the margin is when we do one that's 100% affordable? Uh, the margin's typically five or seven, uh, 7% per house. So usually it comes out to about 15% overall in the project. And again, that's changed because of construction pricing. Yeah. But looking I mean, over I, yeah. everything we've approved, it's it averages out to about 15%. Okay. It's just interesting to me that 15% is can be made when it's 100% affordable and it's only a boost of 5% doing, um, you know, just, I can't do the math in my head, it looks like 40% of the units at um, market rate with each of those having, you know, basically a profit of, I don't know, 75 to $100,000 a piece. Uh, and that only gets you to 20%. I mean, I just think it's something we need to make sure we're looking, we're closely looking at, because I know the disposition allows a policy allows us to do a below market rate mm -hmm. um, sale, but right, we're supposed to mm -hmm. max it out at what the 
project carry. So I think this one is right on the tipping point. Yeah, I, I mean, and we had set it at 20 because that's typical what most developers are looking for in terms of return. Um, and, and that's where we cap it. If it had exceeded that, we probably would have pushed back on the land price. Okay, thank you. Uh, does board have any other questions or comments on this item before I turn it over to Andrea? Maria, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a question. So when you're looking at the analysis on the sales for these lots, so you're looking at a percentage of the overall development budget, not necessarily the appraised value of the land? No, uh, what we know what the appraised value is, but it also we also we tell developers you have to give us a pro forma that works, and it works for that works for them. So we don't uh, we're not that prescriptive on that situation. Uh, so then when once we get it, because obviously it's legislated fifty one percent affordable, we do negotiate in terms of the level of affordability. Uh, in some areas, uh, 80% is the high end. In other areas, you know, it, the council office is willing to go up to 100. So, uh, and mainly that conversation is due to turn the key because they know with turn the key, they'll be able to get increased or lower AMI into the property. Um, so as long as the overall project is at 20%, we generally don't, you know, uh, push on the sales price. Okay. I mean, I, I'll just say this, the developer and everybody has to understand that they have to get the financing on their own. Um, they, you know, the construction costs right now, percentage wise is higher. Uh, construction material costs are higher. Um, so we, all of those variables go into account. Right. Yeah. And I guess it's, you know, it's, it varies on neighborhoods because, you know, some areas are, you know, a higher, the land appraises higher. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's a greater economic benefit to developers, um, even though, you know, there's increased cost for development these days, which I know is very challenging. Um, but I think that, you know, to maximize the return back to the land bank, I think that's something that needs to be considered on a case by case basis, of course, you know, if there's a greater economic benefit to come back for sale of a parcel of land that usually goes for a little bit more. Uh, and Andrew. Thank you. So just a quick question about turn the key then, since obviously most of the RFPs are for 100% at, you know, 100% AMI turn the key eligibility or, or under. So for this situation, only five of the homes would be eligible for turn the key, right? And the other four would not? Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? You have a question. Uh, has this developer uh, acquired any additional properties from the land bank? I can't remember. Yeah, they, uh, they actually, they just closed. They had two projects that the board approved. Um, that would be on East Birch Street and Stella Street, which they're, I think, 80% complete mm -hmm. on, and then Cantrell and Mercy Street. Um, and I believe last month, Jesse, they were they were presented before the board for a project. Am I correct in that? No, no this, yeah, this is the most recent trip to the board. Okay. Yeah. How many um how many units are they proposing to produce overall between all the properties that they have received and will be receiving from the land bank? Um, I think the two previous applications that Angel was talking about, roughly about 50 some odd properties or 50 some odd units between the two, if I'm not mistaken. Am I shooting too yeah, high? Yeah, you're shooting too high. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they had uh, the first two projects I mentioned, total parcels they received were 27, and then they would be receiving uh, this batch. I'm sorry, I was doubling at 20 some odd properties. That would be a, yeah, 27. So it's, yeah, there are 30. Oh, 20, 23, 20, 23 units in total. Yeah, 23 units. And then you add these. Sorry, 32, 19 and 13, 32 units in total. So, so plus these. Okay, so 32 units in total, and that includes these. 13. No, they will, they, they will, they will. Plus these. So it'll be a total of 41. A total of 41. Yeah. They're 
producing. Okay. Do we know what their um, profit margin was in the previous? Were they all affordable? No, uh, they were mixed income mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what they were bringing uh, down. They never exceeded 20%. Uh, so in the first, in East, and East, East Birch and Stella Street, there were 15 parcels conveyed, 18 units created, and then 12 of them were affordable. And then uh, Cantrell and Mercy Street, there were 12 parcels conveyed, 12 units uh, out of the 12 parcels, eight of them were affordable. And they all qualify for term the key. Okay, good. I was looking through the, the report and I was trying to, as you were talking about the percentage and the profit, I was trying to calculate it, but I don't see anything that I, how'd you get that number? Cause I don't see anything that kind of just shows you that. Am I missing something? Uh, we don't, uh, the percentages aren't usually presented in the budget. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have to ask. So I think that, and I don't know if the fact sheet was updated to include or maybe I had missed it the first time, the market rate sales prices. Jesse, you have that off the top of your head? Last time we checked, it was roughly about $450,000 per market rate unit. So you just have to do the calculation, right? Four times 450 plus five times two, whatever the other ones were. Total okay. cost is like, I can't remember, 3.8 million or 2.8 million or something like that. You get, it comes out to about 20%. Right. Okay. I wasn't I didn't see anything. So I was like, how are you calculating that so quickly? Yeah. <laughs> You're better yeah. than I am. That's what that is. Okay. All right. Those are my questions. All right. Uh, any other board questions? All right. Seeing none, Andrea, did we receive any public comment on this item? Yes, and I apologize for um, jumping with That's okay. No problem. I oftentimes forget, so I understand why you jumped in there. All right. Um, so yes, we did receive three public comments, uh, emails. Uh, the first was from, um, let's see, from Jesse Crone um, regarding 723 Mercy Street. Um, the, the concern was that there was, they're, they're not opposing construction, but there's a very large tree that shades the community garden that's on the Emily side street of that lot and so they were um, they wanted us to look into whether that tree is going to be removed or not um, because the gardeners weren't aware of the disposition being on the you know on the other side of the block on the, the back side um, also uh, stated uh, a concern that the land wasn't available for purchase as a side yard because they would have been he and her family would have been interested in um, in uh, acquiring that property. Um, the second one was regarding uh, from Ms. Naomi Robinson um, on behalf of the residents of the five and 600 block of Winton Street, who uh, sent an email concerning the new construction, stating that they were opposed to it because of parking concerns, that there is permit parking, but it's even with a permit, it's very difficult to find parking and they often have to park blocks away. Um, because of multiple large apartment buildings that are located nearby. Um, and then the third one was from Bruce Baldwin, who is president of the 7th Street Community Civic Association. And uh, it's my understanding that um, they were, Jesse, were they, did they host the community meeting? They did. Yes. And okay. Bruce Baldwin was part of that conversation. Right. So um, stating that they are not opposing this project and supporting it because although they have, do have parking issues, those are, that's a citywide concern and that um, basically the people who did attend the meeting were supportive of having these otherwise blighted lots developed into, into homes and um, not being available for various kinds of um, not not very healthy uses for the neighborhood. So, Great. thank you, Andrea. Uh, and and now we'll go to public comment. We've got a few hands up. Um, we'll start with Justin Beatty. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. 
So thank you everyone for taking the time. First off, uh, I'm the developer, Justin Vizio on behalf of BBG Property Group. So I just wanted to address a couple of concerns from the board and the neighborhood. So to start with the neighborhood for the tree situation, we did look into that. It actually would be located in mostly on their lot. So we wouldn't knock down the tree at all. Um, we would just have to possibly build the yard fence around it so that they can maintain it, which I'm willing to work with the neighbor on. I just haven't reached out because I didn't want to put the the, the car ahead of of the um, the race yet. But uh, I am going to be working with them to make sure that that doesn't get uh, damaged. And the reason why the land probably wasn't available and to go to the board's comments, um, this was supposed to be part two of the larger application. So my first application in South Philly, I took 12 properties and in Port Richmond, I took 15, which was one big one at first, but had to get broken down into two. We had a couple of these properties that weren't confirmed available yet when we went. So we had to split this one up, which is probably why it's been on hold. Um, and to address the board, I, I've been through this uh, a couple of times um, now, as I came to you guys last time. So I, I really like this program, the Turn the Key program. We're building houses that I have appraisal in hand that is 405 in that neighborhood. So the, the point of this Turn the Key program and the reason why we got involved is to give people that work for the city or, you know, an affordable opportunity to basically get uh, generational wealth and equity in their home. Uh, when I'm building these houses that have basements, I'm spending a little bit more. So the profit margin obviously isn't there on the affordable uh, as much as people think it is, especially with a 9% market right now of interest rates, prime plus one. And, you know, the the affordable product they're getting that they're selling for 270 or at the time, the city, and we're going through it now because we've completed them in five months, the city's given $75,000 for buyers. So it's a $200,000 buy for, for uh, residents, and the house is worth four hundred five. dollars So I think is in terms of me completing the overall goal of both the developer and the land bank, it is there um, with the product that people are getting of the houses that I'm building. The market rates are simply just to subsidize that. And again, if you look at my projects overall, I've acquired... 15 total lots in Port Richmond, 12 total lots in South Philly, and now I'm going for another nine. Uh, but my overall project is 25 to 11 in favor of affordable, which gives you 70% affordable. And the market rates, although you can look at the re return that I'm getting, the 75 to 100,000, uh, the fact of the matter is in this market with a 9% interest rates and in these neighborhoods, the comps aren't there yet. So when I say 450, that's me pushing the comp and hoping that it goes. And I'm hoping that I'm not in front of the land bank board to try to rent these when if they don't sell. But I have to coop for my cost. And basically, I'd like to do it in one application so that I'm not coming back to the board over and asking for uh, forgiveness or help in, in certain situations. So I just wanted to explain that. And uh, finally, on the parking issue, obviously, there's nothing I could do. I sat and met with Mr. Bruce Baldwin. Um, he wanted some more market rate additions to um, the affordable in that neighborhood to kind of help build it up as, as there is a lot of drug use uh, going on there. And we stood behind him and he had mentioned that uh, I'm going to meet with the resident. I, I do forget her name, but I'm going to talk to her about the parking issue, which obviously I can't do anything for because the parking is just not there in general. But um, we definitely took her concern to heart. And I'm glad that the RCO did support the project just to make the note I sent this, I had two RCO meetings with this neighborhood, which both were in heavy support. And I've sent letters to everyone in the neighborhood. And this concern just came up about a week ago following this. So it's kind of new to me. So I didn't really have the time to address it. But uh, thank you again to the board for taking the time. And I'm looking forward to, to completing the projects. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and next we have Naomi Robinson. Ms. Robinson, you should be able to unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. I think you're unmuted. Ms. Robinson, are you able to speak? Uh, why don't we go to um, Charles Noonan, who also has his hand up, and we can come back to Naomi Robinson, and hopefully she'll be able to 
talk to us. Uh, Mr. Noonan, you're unmuted. You should be able to address the board. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I hope this isn't a problem on our side. Um, because unfortunately we can't hear Mr. Noonan either. Uh, so let's try uh, Dawood Bay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. My name is Dawood. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Dawood Bay from Fine Print Construction, and I just kind of wanted to double down on something that Angel was saying in regards to uh, the pace uh of these houses um i'm the framer and carpenter on the cantrell and mercy and first street projects and we kind of like get into the roof of these houses within two days so as far as our capacity from a carpentry standpoint has been allowing us to be able to really grow and build our capacity on these type of projects so we're getting these projects out pretty fast and i just wanted to kind of like you know big up justin Beasy on you know his capacity and what he's doing and just wanted to overall just thank everybody as far as the program with the uh, current key program. I do think we want to be able to get these type of projects out and get them out at scale. So I just wanted to double down on my support with the affordable houses and the term key program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bay. Um, and I will note that uh, Ms. Robinson put uh, a comment in the chat about the need for parking, including parking in the RFPs. And I know that Mr. VC said that he would reach out to try to address parking issues with within his ability. Um, all right, the next one we have is Jesse Crone. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead, please. Great, thank you very much. Um, I just, I'm the person who wrote the um, message about the tree abutting 723 Mercy that Andrea mentioned. Um, I just wanted to say that I was really happy to hear that the developer had already considered had the impact on the community garden. That's really wonderful. Um, and to note that I think our situation is a little different than some of the other feedback. Um, the neighbors on our street are happy for the land to be developed. We also have some issues with litter and drugs um, on the street and the vacant lots are not helpful. Um, that lot I pay someone to come mow it occasionally because it encourages litter and loitering when people see it unmowed. Um, we keep trash cans out there so people can put litter away. Um, so, you know, other than the concern about the abutting community garden, I don't, I can't speak for everyone on the block, but the immediate neighbors, um, both across and to the sides of the lot, um, were supportive of that lot no longer remaining vacant. Right. I've never participated. You, okay, so I've never participated in a meeting like this, so I don't know if I said the right thing, but that's you that's, were fine. You did a great job. Thank you. We appreciate much. that. Uh, and next we have uh, Jah Jahad Ali. Uh, good good morning, uh, members of the board, Madam Chairperson. Um, I wanted to make a comment about. I think the attorney key. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we I think can. Attorney, I think the attorney key is a is a. It sounds like it's going to be a great program. I um, didn't have a vote of confidence hearing you, uh, Madam Chair, and the exec director go through that report. You know, to me, it seems like you know I'm more familiar with you and your expertise in the field. It seems like you it needs more work needs to be done with the board really taking a leadership role in that. Um, because one of the things that I'm concerned about is this whole. Uh, MBE participation thing. I've been consistent with that, you know, and I have a consistent fight to just to try to get my hands on a report that your organization or along with uh, OECD or whoever's taking the ultimate responsibility is generating. And when I see those reports, I see that, you know, it's really sad in this state, the state of affairs that MBEs are only at 10% uh, and then, you know, women are 25%. In this city, then when you look further on these reports and say that you don't have no local participation, I don't care what uh, black sound, African American sounding uh, carpenter comes on here and tells you about how good it is. When I go out there and see, don't see no black people working. How can I but think something's not right? And so we, I can only, I can only get some, I can only realize what's really happening when I get the facts. And because I'm not able to get the facts, I, a drive-by doesn't work. 
You can't drive by a site and assume that they're not doing something. But if I can get my hands on a report, then I can know what they're doing. So, Madam Chairperson, I'm going to ask you again, can you make it a way for the public to get access to these reports? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ali. And you are exactly right. You show up all the time and, and you are very clear on what your issue is. And uh, I know it's taking a very long time. Angel can, can attest to that I raise this issue every uh time I have a meeting with the uh, compliance folks and we are very much working on putting a public dashboard up so that information is much easier to uh, see uh, on a regular basis and by the public but it is taking uh, unfortunately it's taking some time to get there uh, but that is something that's definitely being uh, worked on and I know you look forward to seeing that information as do I because I look forward to at some point, you're raising your hand and saying, I can't get the information, and I can tell you where the dashboard is, and you will have that. So it is something we're working on, and I know it's taking a long time. Uh, and so I apologize for that, but we are we are trying to get there. Thank you. Uh, all right. Can we try uh, Naomi Robinson again? Although she has been corresponding, I would say, in the Q&A about parking, and it looks like there might be some publicly owned land nearby that potentially could be used for parking, although I don't know if, if it would meet all the zoning requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Ms. Robinson, can you try to unmute yourself? Hello? Hey, there we go. Okay, go ahead. I, Please provide your comment to the board. Yes, you know, my major concern is, is that when you have these developers come in, when they submit their plans for you for the site, it's that they need to have parking. If the, I don't know how they can do it. They can do it if you can plan it. As I stated, you own a piece of land three blocks down. I don't walk the site. That could be turned over for parking. And whatever means you need to do that through the streets department or whatever, it needs to be looked at before you keep putting these new houses and these people come in and once they get here, they're not going to be satisfied because they can't park. And people own two cars. Okay, thank you, Ms. Robinson. And uh, maybe it's a conversation between the developer and the land bank about that piece of property that, that potentially is available. Uh, and let's try Charles Noonan again. Go ahead, Mr. Noonan. I think you're unmuted. All right. Fortunately, we are not able to hear Mr. Noonan. Mr. Noonan, if you're able, maybe you could try to put your question in the Q&A and we could try to respond. Uh, and let's go to Rachel Pritzker. Good morning, uh, Chairwoman and members of the board. Um, I just wanted to actually commend the board <laughs> for the amount of approvals and moving these through the process, which has been amazing because we have an affordable housing crisis. And while, you know, we may not be able to get everything we want, we're not building dream homes, we're building affordable housing. And I don't want it to get lost that the speed at which this organization has been going has been faster than we have in many years. And it's something to be commended. I live in a two-story row home in Philly. I don't have parking. It doesn't deter me from buying the house. It didn't deter me from living here. Is it an ideal situation? No, but the alternative is adding 50,000 plus to the cost and not having it be anywhere affordable. So, you know, while we want all these things, we have to be considerate of the price point of it, what we're trying to deliver as a city. And, you know, this isn't hopefully somebody's only home, right? This is hopefully getting them a start. And then they, maybe they can purchase a home that has parking, but the economics around parking, as I'm sure the chairwoman well knows from her days working with private developers, really doesn't allow for affordability. It also limits the number of sites you can use for with reasons. And then we'd have probably trigger a variance for front-loaded parking on almost every one of these sites, which would involve now a 10-month process causing tens of thousands of more dollars and time to deliver these units. So, you know, I, I don't have a solve for parking. Nobody does, but I will say that the city has lost, I think the last report state of the cities was a 14% reduction in population. And so people are actually leaving the city and I don't think it's because of parking, but it also means that that's less cars and less things. And we have 
the best one of the best public transit systems. So I think maybe there's a way to educate people on where the transit is or something like that. But adding parking will add cost, will add time, and will make this process slower. So I just want to just speak a little bit to the realities of that. And maybe it's just something us as a city, we have to just understand that the benefit we're providing far outweighs some of the things we can't have on these projects. But I don't want it to get lost that I do appreciate the speed at which this has been done. Um, it's been uh, amazing to watch and just wanted to add my two cents around the parking as a land use attorney. I hear it in every RCO meeting for every project. Uh, and I just want to make sure we're considerate of the economics of that. It doesn't make it affordable and it's not as easy as just throw it on a project. So thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question in the Q&A about, oh, I guess it was answered. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Vizi has his hand up again, but he's already had an opportunity to speak. Um, and so I think we will go ahead and I'm gonna call the question. So uh, can I get a, unless the board has any other additional questions or comments. Uh, yeah, Alex. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I just wanted to note, my organization actually provides cleaning along Snyder Avenue through the Taking Care of Business program. And I'm definitely aware of some of the challenges that were raised relative to vacant lots and nuisance activities. So I appreciate those comments from the public and definitely recognize where they're coming from. Thank you, Chair. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? All right, uh, seeing none, I am going to uh, Call the question. I move that we approve the disposition. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the disposition of uh, properties on Cantrell, Mercy Street, Tree Street, and Witten Street for a mixed income home ownership project. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries, thank you. Uh, and we are on to item 4B, which is a development uh, assemblage that was unsolicited. Thanks again, Madam Chair. Today we're asking the board to authorize the disposition of 3358 Kensington Avenue in Kensington um, to the adjacent property owner for completing an assemblage. The applicant is 3360 to 70 Kensington Partners LLC, and they own the vacant structure at that particular location, 3360 to 70 Kensington Avenue. In this proposal, the applicant intends to acquire the land bank property to assemble it with the vacant property uh, to develop a mixed use project with three commercial units and 13 affordable multifamily rental units, those of which that will all be leased to tenants with incomes at or below 80% of AMI. The building itself will be rehabbed for the mixed use, and the lot will act as a courtyard and entrance to the proposal's residences. The unit mixes as follows in the uh, rehab of the structure. There'll be three ground floor commercial units that will vary in size between 692 square feet and 836 square feet. Seven affordable studios between 330 and 364 square feet in size, uh, half of which will be accessible at the ground floor. Four affordable one-bedroom units between 483 and 500 square feet, and two affordable bedroom units, two, two affordable two-bedroom units, excuse me, uh, sized at 938 square feet. Uh, the proposal itself was unsolicited and evaluated pursuant to the disposition policy. The developer will purchase the property for $4,600. Evidence of project financing has been provided. The applicant is compliant and in good standing with the city of Philadelphia. The project will be subject to an economic opportunity plan and also subject to an irrevocable power of attorney and right of re-entry reverter. There will be a declaration of restrictive covenants placed on the units to ensure that they remain affordable uh, for a minimum of 30 years. That 30 year term was just afford, uh, approved by the board last month. Um, and attendants will be uh, income certified at that particular point um, upon leasing um, and for that particular term. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I just want to say, even though I know that this is being presented as 80% affordable rental, which is great, um, it seems that part of the way they're able to get there is because they've got some very, very small units. And those small units at this um, 
at 80 percent rent are still like over three dollars and something a square foot because of the side of the unit which is frankly market rate um or though maybe not center city market rate which i know is pushing five dollars a square foot um but still i think that you know fifteen hundred dollars for 300 square foot or 330 square foot unit or something like that um is is a is a lot of money for for that size unit um and so i i'm just hesitant about this one because because i i don't think that fifteen hundred dollars for 330 or 40 square foot is an affordable rent even though technically it does meet the the 80 percent of ami requirement um and that's like a comment i'm not having a question in there i apologize so but um, any other questions or comments? Oh, go ahead, uh, uh, Maria. Yeah, I I, I, I share um, your comments as well. Um, I do not even know if those unit sizes meet the building codes for those unit specifications. They seem to be very small, and you know, and it's very concerning that we're adding density, which density, you know, planned correctly is good um on a corridor but you know the density is not smart because you have a lot of tiny units that may be challenging to rent um you know long term um it's just concerning so I, I i just you know have my doubts about that if that's even you know economically viable or uh, marketable um where there's a lot of competition you know in in these uh neighborhoods any other questions or comments from the board? I just, I just, I agree with you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, also with Maria. Um, I think these, the entire plan needs to be relooked at, um, just in terms of the way that it's laid out with the access to these units, literally from the back. Uh, there appears to be no sort of front access other than this, the courtyard, I guess that's the main access in, but other than that, um, you're really going through the back. And, and again, with the size of the units, um, I think is a real concern. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, Andrea, do we receive any comments from the public prior to the board meeting? Not that I'm aware of. Um, no, not specifically okay. mentioning this particular disposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we do have some hands up from the public and we'll start with Rachel Pritzker. Thank you, Chairwoman and members of the board. I, I think the description of this was a little confusing. So the client actually already, the owners own 3360 and 70. Um, where they're proposing this project, and then they're acquiring 3358 from the land bank just from the to use as part of the project. Um, so it's an assemblage of an existing uh, ownership that they already have. And then we're just wrapping in the land banks one vacant piece in the middle of the block to not actually put housing on it, but to incorporate it for some green space on the side. Is this? This is for a shift capital, correct, Angel and Jesse? Yeah. Yeah. So the proposal of the actual units is not on the city's land, but as an assemblage. I'm happy to go back to them with the con concern, excuse me, around the unit sizes. But I just want to be clear that the purchase is an assemblage in which the land bank's vacant sliver is being used as part of uh, what's already a privately held project. So I just don't think the description made that very clear, um, but I, I still think obviously the board has the ability to review the project as a whole, but wanted to be clear on that. It's not a full purchase of just city owned land here. Thank you, very helpful. Uh, and next we have Jihad Ali. Hello, um, you know, the question I had is, Mr. Mr. Ali, for some reason, Mr. Ali, we're having a very hard time hearing you. You're coming through very, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Almost like you have like auto tune or something. Yeah, how about now? There we go. Much better. Much better. Well, go ahead. Well, thank you. 
Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I was just wondering, how does how does something get up to your level that is obviously that bad that it came from, it got up to you as a board and few as a board for you, Mr. John, with his expertise to say, well, wait a minute, um, you know, this, this is not even fit for consideration. Um, and it and I didn't hear the other caller identify herself as the attorney representing them. But I think the board has a responsibility to make sure that um, that you're not um, you're not used like, you know, for a developer that could down the road say, well, you know, this didn't this didn't pan out quite that way. So we're going we're going left when we said we were going right. So I'm just concerned that things come out, get worked their way all the way up to the board. And then we have to stop and say it should have never even got this far. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ali. Um, and I will say, I mean, technically this project does meet the disposition requirements, right? Because you don't have anything about unit size, but that's why the board is here, right? To take a look at these things and say that we think there might be some concerns, but I appreciate those comments. Um, all right, uh, I'm not seeing any other hands up from the public. Um, let's see, there is a question. Okay, someone else uh, who could not be able to raise their hand, uh, but uh, also has an issue about the affordability of the units. Um, uh, so unless there's any other questions or comments from the board, I will uh, entertain a motion on this item. Well, I do have one more comment. I, and I, yeah, sure. I know I've raised this um, times before for other projects in general, and that is, that when the developing development team submits uh, plans of their proposed development and they show units, they should they they must show furniture. You know what I mean? So you can clearly see if a, if it if a living room really is a living room. You know, if there you can fit a sofa, you can fit a bed. You know, and and some minimal dimensions so that we can see. Uh, what a unit layout is, and I understand this is really for the parcel that's adjacent to a, another proposed this proposed project, and I'm assuming that'll have to go through some process anyway, hopefully. Um, but that but that's something that we 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 have to make sure that developers include, and I believe we made that clear before, so I don't know why we're not getting it. Thanks. Uh, I don't think you. Just point of fact, we 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 weren't told that you wanted to see furniture. I don't think. Well, I think it's something to consider, right? Maybe it's something that we should consider going forth is to to include um, a furniture layout to see if the units are livable. I would say too, it would have been helpful on this site plan. I'm just trying to look back through the board package to sort of identify what was the land bank parcel because it's a little hard to pick that out from. What I just very quickly, and maybe Tim there, what I just very quickly tried to go back through the board package to see the layout and where the land bank parcel was as opposed to the privately owned parcels. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? All right. Hearing none, calling the question. Uh, can I get a motion on this item? So, I will make a motion now for approval of this position. Okay. Uh, motion on the floor uh, has been made and properly seconded to not approve this disposition. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, nay. 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 Okay, hold on. Alex, did you vote nay? Okay, so I got four nays and three yays. So motion dies. Um, do I have any other motion? On, do I have another motion on this item? I'll make a motion to table the disposition 3358 Kensington Avenue with the express kind of purpose of going back to the unit size and orientation question. Okay, motion has been made to table to give the developer and staff an opportunity to go back and revisit uh, kind of the proposal on the table. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All right, motion has been made and properly seconded. Angel, you have a question or a comment? I kind of wanted, I was hoping the board would allow me to amend it, that motion. 
to uh, uh, I don't know that staff can amend motion. Um, Sorry. What a shame. Okay. <laughs> nice try. But staff can request a clarifying head can ask a clarifying question. Do you have a clarif yes, clarifying I question? Do. <laughs> Would the board like us to review market rents in the area to make sure that the affordable units are commensurate? Uh, that would be a good idea. Yes, Indeed. I think I, I would say I would recommend looking at the rents and also um, having a conversation about unit sizes. Right. And I think that that should burden should be on the developer, make sure that they're the ones who are leading that effort. Okay. All right. Motion has been made and properly seconded uh, to table this item for further conversations. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries that we're tabling this to, for further discussion with the developer. Okay. Um, and that brings us to item. For C, which is a development for affordable housing that was solicited through a request for a proposal. Thanks again, Madam Chair. The last item on the agenda is item 4C1. Today, we're asking the board to authorize the disposition of 1625 41 North 10th Street at 10th and Cecil Bay um, in the city's North Central area to Savetta Property Group. Savetta is proposing to develop an affordable home ownership in the 5th District. The proposal calls for 14 single family affordable home ownership units, all of which are two stories without basements, roughly about 1,200 square feet each. These units contain three bedrooms and 1.5 bathrooms. That's a correction from the fact sheet, which states two bathrooms, which would be one and a half bathrooms. Um, and it will be sold to the households uh, with incomes that are below 100% of AMI. The maximum sales price is $280,000 for these units as specified in the RFP along with the maximum AMI. Uh, the applications were solicited again through a request for proposals process for the property and the applicant was the most qualified bidder in the properties uh, for the properties. Uh, the developer will purchase this property at its bid price of $1,400. Uh, through the submission of the RFP response, the evidence of project financing was provided along with our ability to verify that the applicant was compliant and in good standing with the city of Philadelphia. Uh, the project will be subject to an economic opportunity plan. It will be subject to an irrevocable power of attorney and right of re-entry reverter. And the sale of these units will be subject to a declaration of restrictive covenants, um, including such, and will be um, again, subject to use restrictions and income verification, uh, this will qualify for the city's turn to keep program as well. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions or comments on this item from the board? Uh, I, I have, you know, the, the same issue, Angel, that I've been asking for that information. So if you can give me an update on where that information is for this particular developer. Yeah, I, uh... I, sorry, I, I, I thought that the developer directly forwarded you their, all their MBE, WBE information. Uh, I haven't seen anything. Okay. I apologize. I, I thought they had sent it to you directly. I have. I'll make sure that happens. Sees anything. Uh, also, I, I think we'd all like to see the info, or I would. Yeah, I think it will be helpful to have some type of report based on the number of units that have been approved for disposition, which ones have been developed, which ones are under construction, and also the ones that have been sold. So that it can give, in addition to the MBWB participation, so we can have a clear um, understanding as to where we are at. I mean, I'm sure that um, they're doing great work. And uh, we just want to make sure that we are, you know, informed as to you know, what's being completed. Right, and that that was the request, mm -hmm. was that information also. I mean, I know that they received a huge amount of property um, and they may be doing a great job. Um, I just, without the, without the information and the data, um, I think we just, we don't, we just don't know. And, and it, it just, it's, it feels, it's uncomfortable, you know? Um, to to continue to dispose of properties to a developer and we don't know how many units been completed you know have, how many folks have kind of got turned turned the key and was able to you know where to get some of these units is just these are a lot of 
properties. I don't even know of the, all the properties that we've disposed of in the past since whenever, how many have gone to this particular developer. And I'd imagine it's close to half or seems that way anyway. I don't know. Those are my issues and questions, comments. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, Andrea, did we receive any public comment prior to the board meeting? You're muted. Sorry, we did not. Thank you. Uh, and it looks like we do have uh, a hand up from the developer. I'm, I'm loath to tell you the name because I always get it wrong. Every time I think it's Brennan, it's Tom and everything I, Tom, it's Brennan. So. <laughs> Please unmute the Thomas Eddy. <laughs> it's Brennan. Good morning. Everyone. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So with regard to the EOP, and I understand um, the, the need for transparency, and we want that very much too. So what I have in front of me are stats on <clears throat> the most recent completed project, which was the Cross Street RFP 21 Homes we completed with 42% EOP. Um, and then we do have an even more recent completion, which was a one-off where we hit 52% combo of MBE, WBE. 38% of that was MBE and 14% WBE. And I know I've mentioned this before, but this is really important to us and we continue to strive to make new partnerships and exceed the targets that have been set by the city at 35%. So we're exceeding it already and we just look to make that number even stronger. Thank you. All right, uh, I don't see any other hands up, so I will take a motion. So before you take a motion, I just wanna make a comment. So if, if you guys are doing so well, then there should be no issue in providing a report to this board um, to be shared and also additional information as it relates to, you know, units completed, units um, uh, sold, and so on and so on. So I think we want to celebrate with you your accomplishments. So um, if you can give us the tools by which for us to do that, that will be very, very helpful. Yeah, I would just say to send all the information to the staff and then staff, please compile something that goes to, to the entire board. All right, any other questions or comments from the board? Yes, um, just one, Madam Chair. I see on the, on the, in the board packet that looks like there's an easement issue where homes can't be built on a certain portion of the property. So I was just wondering what is the, the plan for surface improvements, if any, on that? Um, kind of part facing Cecil B. You mean Cecil B or the corresponding Southern Street? The easement. Well, that, where is the, wherever right. is the easement? Wherever the easement where, is, yeah. right. it looks like it's yeah. facing Cecil they B. They can't be built on. Do we know what's going to happen there? Yeah. Uh, just preliminarily to see if the properties that are southern facing, two of them would be front facing north accessing onto the uh, Cecil B. Moore Avenue. So the easement's just going to be used for access. Does that mean it's going to be paved? Well, there's an existing street underneath. That's the whole thing. The, the okay. Already, so that property hasn't been, there's a, an existing street, but there's like grass over it. So okay. it's a uh, uh, water easement. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah. yeah, I think there, I think there's um there are actually two. One is for um okay. uh, utilities and things, which is on the eastern side of the lot. But there is an easement. It's a dedicated dedicated part of what was used used to be a larger lot, which was dedicated to the city for widening the street, and that cannot be built on. So that would have to be have a sidewalk or access to the homes. Okay. So but that's owned by the by the city and uh, by the city, basically. So so it's owned by the city. So it's not necessarily an easement. No, it's not an easement. It's, it's actually land that is dedicated to the city for the widening of the street. So it cannot. So be are we disposing of that? No piece. No. All right. So that's not even included in the development. Got Correct. it. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board on this item? 
So, so to, to that point, so now is is the city making a commitment to uh, pave that part of that pave that land or just the, all right? So there's a sidewalk that is exceptionally wide, mm -hmm. and there is a sidewalk that's exceptionally wide because the city was supposed to expand the street. It did not. It is from the corner to the viaduct, and they did not do that. It's the same. And it's an existing now. condition that will remain. Right. It, yeah, it's an existing sidewalk that will be, remain there. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right. Can I get a motion on this item? I'm sorry, Alex, we're not hearing you. Did we approve the disposition? Okay. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Motion has been made. I could see your lips moving and you were unmuted, but somehow it wasn't picking it up. All right. Uh, motion has been made. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second it. All right. Motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the disposition of 1625 through 41 North 10th Street for the development of affordable home ownership. All in favor? Um. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Um, that concludes our regular agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to uh, approach the board about other business? For the for, uh, county speaker, we're waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see anybody with their hands up. Go ahead. So for the for the next um, cohort of small developers. Um, when does when does that happening or how and how do folks know about it and when do they know about it and how does that work? Are you talking about the minority developer? Minority, right, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we plan on uh, issuing an RFQ by the end of this month. Uh, we typically uh, have a email list focused on uh, registered minority uh, development firms, women owned and minority development firms of close, I think almost a thousand, if not more. Um, we will be targeting our marketing, but we will, it will be on our website and we will be utilizing, uh, you know, all the other typical channels. I know that the BIA has really focused on that and other channels so that we can get a, uh, a good class. And do we, do we have a report or can we get a report on the last class and kind of status how they're doing if they're developing and sure I, I i can tell you that we enrolled 16 companies there were about 35 participants um all representatives of those companies four of those companies were able to uh obtain land from the land bank and are developing them uh one of them one of the graduates was daoud bay he's been kind of prolific in the number of RFPs and applications he submitted. Um, and then you have three other firms that have uh, dispositions that are working forward. I will say this in the, in the feedback loop and what we've been working on uh, to find out what the rest of the group is, what's the biggest concern that the developers are having. One is construction costs and construction financing. So the price of money has gone up and it's very difficult for them. Uh, it has squeezed the margins, especially on smaller projects. So for the rest of the board, typically the RFPs are anywhere from five to 10 parcels uh, that we try to put out there. Uh, the margins get tighter with a smaller project. Um, so we have been working, PHDC and the city have been working to come up with alternatives um, to help with um, construction financing. We've had several meetings with a lot of banks. There's a lot of interest um, with being able to kind of a hybrid fund to really assist smaller developers so that they can get um, money at a, at a cheaper interest rate. So as you heard with Justin Vesey that, you know, or Dode Bay, they're, they're at like 9%. So if we could cut that in half to five to where it was in the beginning of the year, um, that would be a, a big help. So we're working on that and also establishing um, great relationships with uh, partnerships. I will say that's one of the things that have uh, 
a list uh, allowed affordable alliance to move forward quickly and establish a relation um, relationship with banks. The other thing that we're working very closely with is um, the accelerator fund. The accelerator fund has kind of gotten into overdrive about issuing LOIs for projects coming through the land bank and answering RFPs. Uh, so it's a great partnership there. I will say that we also have expanded our network. Um, we do have, we, we work with Black Squirrel, which is another group that's uh, focusing on this issue. Um, we're, we've gotten uh, applications from their participants as well. So on the whole, uh, I think we've been doing, I would say four out of 16 is a pretty good number. Um, obviously, we need to do better, but um, we have to deal with the existing market. So we're trying to address those market issues that are keeping MBE and WBE you know, participants from moving forward. So, but by the end of the month, we'll have another round. Thank you. Uh, and we do have one hand up from Winnie Branton. Thank you for taking my question. I just had a question about the land uh, management dashboard. Um, does that dashboard reflect um, dispositions from both the land bank, the redevelopment authority and the city of Philadelphia? Yes, so what you're looking at, so when we merged land management um, manages disposition of title from all three agencies um, including PHDC, so it's four. Um, typically with city properties, they'll be disposed of through the land bank, so the land bank's actually disposing, but PRA still has inventory and is actively disposing. Um, so you'll see, um, some, so the numbers on that dashboard do in, include uh, PRA and, and land bank dispositions. Okay, great, thank you. All right, uh, I don't see any hands up, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all right, and I am here any opposed. Uh, so that concludes our May Land Bank uh, board meeting, and we will see you back here in June. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you.